Well, it's springtime here in Kentucky, turkey season right now. All kinds of good things is coming up in the woods. Some things good, some things not so good. But we got our buddy here, Craig Caudle, with Nature Alliance, and he's a he's a survivalist. He's a nature survivalist. He can uh, he's an expert on this stuff, and he brought some stuff he's going to share with y'all. We've been talking about poison ivy and and uh, some of this stuff I know. Some of it I don't, but Greg. Yeah, this one, right? I know that. Oh, yeah. Merlin <laughs> knows that one. Yeah, but uh, Greg, glad to have you here, buddy. Yeah, good to be here. Appreciate be you here. coming and doing this. Nice to, nice to see you fellas again. Yeah. You're not only the director of this school right here, but you wrote three books. I have, yeah. Uh, we teach a lot of folks, uh, just good old average ordinary folks like us, but I, I've taught the FBI, DEA, Department of Defense contract to. Um, both in survival, man tracking. I do hands-on classes. Uh, again, we do online sort of stuff too. I'm author of three different books, uh, three books on backcountry skills. I've also written the, co-written the Tiny Survival Guide. So yeah, all kinds of stuff. It's always something's always going on. Yeah. Burley's working on a book. Yeah, he finishes it this year. He'll he maybe try another one next year. What do you got laid out here for? Man? Well, we got a little bit of everything. I've got some stuff here that we should never eat. That's poison hemlock, horse and edel, what a lot of people look and and call wild tomatoes. Tomatoes, yeah. yeah stay away from them. Yeah. We don't want to stay away from them. But we've also got some good stuff. A lot of people have a problem with dandelions. I actually love dandelions. They're really yeah. good for you. Real good for uh, all kinds of vitamins in them. Good for your digestive tract. Good for uh, high cholesterol. Uh, yeah. So those are real good. Uh, we've got dock here. This actually is bitter dock. Yeah. So it's bitter, but it does have some vitamin C, so it has a little sour taste to it. Uh, clover and wood sorrel. These two look similar. Uh, clover's three leaves. Wood sorrel's three leaves, but wood sorrel's got three leaves that look like hearts. Yeah. Y'all know what that tastes like? Y'all eat that before? Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's the one I love teaching kids because it's yeah. it's not there's nothing that is a poisonous look alike for wood sorrel. Right. It tastes like lemons. You can make a lemonade drink out of it. Looks like a shamrock. It does. It is a shamrock. So it's it's good stuff. Um this is cleaver here. This is not something you want to eat, but man, it makes a really good tea. Mm. Check that out. Got stuck right to stick, you. sticky on it. Yeah, he It'll likes stick right to you. He likes them stinging nettles too. Oh, <laughs> Lord. But that's that's cleaver, so that's the that's the easiest way to identify it. And when you pull it up, it gets hung up on your hand, and you can just stick it to your shirt or something like that. Now this is another one. You don't know what that is, right? Yeah. Early gig. Yeah, little helicopters. Those are the seeds off of maple maple trees. You can actually pull that seed out. You can eat that seed, fry yeah. them up, put a little salt on them like pumpkin seeds or something of that nature. Squirrels wear them out. I they do. That. that is a good wildlife yeah. wildlife uh, seed turkeys. right there. I've found them in turkeys after. Yeah. Clean them turkeys. This right here, this dock, we used to make greens out of that. and They would, uh, I'll tell you, we eat so many greens and he did. They had to tie coal oil rags around his ankles to keep cut worm from eating him. It was they, but uh, them greens is good. They all that dandelion. We mix dock and dandelion greens. And yeah, this this time of year is really good for dandelions when they first come up. The right. older they get, uh, the more bitter they get. So the other thing, and I didn't have a didn't have a dandelion leaf here, but it's real easily identified. It's from the French word is dandelion, which tooth of the lion. It's got yeah. backwards facing like spearhead. Yeah, exactly. And that's real good in the spring to eat as a green. That's a real good. My, matter of fact, one of my neighbors was asking me why I didn't spray for dandelions in my yard, right? And I was like, I tell you what, you go get me some spring mix at Kroger's. And we'll take a look at it. And he did, and we laid it out on the hood of his truck, and there's dandelion leaves in his spring mix. And he's like, I said, that's why I don't spray for my dandelions. Because you, you're buying that at the grocery store, and I, I'm getting it in my yard for yeah, free. Right. <laughs> Not only that, bees, too. Oh, oh bees, yeah. Bees work in blooms. They're really good. This is nettle. Um, this is purple nettle here. Uh, henbit looks real similar to that. Right. Those are that's two different plants. Was, These are two different plants. The purple nettle. This is another one that's a little bit bitter to eat, but you can. But uh, I make teas with this. This is real good stuff. Uh, here's another good one. This is plantain. 
comes in two forms, lance leaf and broadleaf plantain. I used some of that the other day, a big red wasp stung yeah. my wife on the arm, and I put a piece of jewel weed in my mouth, and some of that chewed it up and made, a, made it juicy and put it on that, and yeah. it'll stop a bee sting. Right now. Yep. Right now. Anything itchy or sting, that's good for good stuff, yep. plantain. Um, and you, that's called a spit poultice, what most people yeah. call it. Just make a spit poultice, put it in your mouth, yeah. chew it up. I don't chew up jewelry, but I do chew up plantain. That's good stuff. This stuff again, though, which is real common around disturbed areas, uh, this is poison hemlock. A lot of people will see this, and it looks similar to wild carrot. Yeah. And this right here will kill you deader than a hammer, son. I mean, this will put you down. This is what, you, you all probably know them as Socrates, right? Yeah. Socrates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what killed Socrates, or whatever. that's what they think killed Socrates. Well, later on in the summer, does it get a big white bloom it on does, it? It does, and that and so does the wild carrot, and that's okay. why a lot of people get those two confused. So it's one of those things that I spend a lot of time doing this, so I can go out and feel pretty comfortable with it, but if you're ever going to do this, you don't just kind of, casually going to do it, you've really got to know the identifying features of what you're looking at. So what's the difference between that and the wild carrot or one or Well, the wild carrot's going to have a hairy stem to it. It doesn't have that purplish stem like you see right there. Okay. And it's not tubular like this is this is tubular. And again, this, this plant's not harmful really. I need to wash my hands. I won't eat until I wash my hands. It won't hurt me. Uh, but making a tea out of that's problematic. Real problematic for anybody. <coughs> mm. I think that's got our table covered, guys. Maybe violets, common blue violets. Yeah. That's a nice one. Um, not really a big time salad, but I like to throw them into a salad to make it look real pretty. Um, like to put it on ice cream. Common blue violets. Yeah, good stuff. Ice cream, I put Hershey chocolate syrup on my ice cream. <laughs> I put peanut butter on mine too. How about that? <laughs> All right, then. Hey, if people wanted to attend one of your classes or learn more about survival and stuff, how they get a hold of you, Greg? Everything's on our website, Nature Reliance, naturereliance.org. I've got hands-on workshops. I've got online classes. Got a new one just came out called Foraging for Fun, Eating Weeds, where I talk people through all this sort of stuff. And online, that's an online course. That'd be a good thing educational for kids to do now. Yeah, we do. We actually teach a lot of school kids. My wife does most of that. We get a good opportunity to get kids out, teach them how to do that sort of thing. We love doing that for the school systems. Yeah, Man, that's great. That's a great service.